Today we're going to go into detail with articles. I want to look at 12 different sentences, four here, which is just X is Y with different articles, four here, which is just X has Y with different articles, and four here, which is just X is in a Y, so it's a prepositional phrase with to be, with um, different articles. And I hope to show you that there's a pattern here, there's something to be learnt. Namely, an X is the Y will pretty much always be wrong. Um, an X has the Y is going to be wrong if it's an inalienable object. We spoke about this before because that means it's an existential clause. And also, um, an X is in the Y is very rare. It sounds quite poetic to me and I think we would normally change it to this. Anyway, let's start with an X is a Y, and the X is a Y, and an X is the Y, and the X is the Y. Now, let's take moon and round body. First of all, moon is X, and let Y be round body. So, a moon is a round body. We would use this to describe any moon, okay? Not the moon which comes up every night in our sky, but any moon, Jupiter's moon, Saturn's moons. We're saying that any moon is a round body. Basically, this is the kind of sentence you might see in a dictionary or something like that. A moon is a round body which orbits a planet. Something like that. We'd use indefinite articles in a dictionary because we don't know which one. And uh, this would certainly be an existential clause, but it's an ev a really indefinite in existential clause because this is still an existential clause. The moon is a round body, but here we know which moon. We know that we're talking about our moon. So if somebody says the moon, they mean our moon. And so these two are both possible. A moon is a round body, the moon is a round body, and we'd usually say this to describe the moon, yeah? If we're giving it attributes, we're saying that the moon, our moon, is a round body, we're describing that moon, and it's an existential clause. Um, one thing you will probably not hear is the moon is the round body, and this is because what do we mean by the round body? The round body must be deictic, it must refer to something with which the listener is familiar or perhaps it's unique. And um, the round body is, is just not, it's not unique, um, it's unlikely to be a familiar concept to the listener. Um, as in, you know, when you say the moon is the round body, it sounds like all the other planets and stars, or, or all the other moons, sorry, all the other moons are perhaps cubic or tetrahedral, but the moon is a round body, it is the round body, sorry. The moon is the round body and it's not the tetrahedral body or the, the other bodies which you already know about. And basically it's just not going to happen because the round body is too, um, it's too indefinite it's it's not a defined thing now let's look at big tiger and dangerous animal um, oh and of course you can't say a moon is the round body it's just not possible um, coming on to tiger and dangerous animal big tiger dangerous animal a big tiger is a dangerous animal it's true and this is very light on information it's just saying that it's any big tiger would be a dangerous animal and I think we can all agree that's true the big tiger is a dangerous animal. Sounds like you're referring to one which maybe the listener knows about. A tiger which the listener knows about. Maybe the big tiger at the zoo. Or maybe the big tiger that he saw yesterday. Um, but you're just, uh, you're just describing that tiger and saying it's a dangerous animal. But the, the big tiger is the dangerous animal. It sounds like you've already introduced this dangerous animal earlier in the conversation and then that's the only time you would say this so again for both of these two i hope you realize that that's pretty much not acceptable either although it is possible generally this one's impossible yeah a big tiger is the dangerous animal impossible again but um still for these two please notice that that one's not really correct or it's very rare that you would say that um, usually you're just describing. Now I wanted to show you one where this is very likely though. Policeman and murderer. If we say a policeman is a murderer, that gives us really little information. We don't know which policeman and we don't know which murder. And so it doesn't really give us much information at all. 
the policeman is a murderer is what you would say if you know that the policeman is a bad man but you don't know exactly which murder he's guilty of you just know maybe someone told you that he is a murderer and so you say the policeman is a murderer i don't know which murders he committed but the policeman is a murderer somebody told me and i'm convinced so that would still be an existential clause you're ascribing you're ascribing properties to the policeman however at the end of a detective novel you know exactly which murders have been committed and you know who the policeman is because you'll probably have a policeman a doctor a lawyer a number of different professions in the story and at the end of the story maybe the detective has deduced that the policeman is the murderer which murderer the murderer in this book and so that's when we would need the and the together um, as you should notice that it's referential it refers to an earlier murderer um, who the reader is already familiar with even though this is the moment of discovering who the murderer is the reader is familiar with this murderer because the whole book is about this murderer and there's only one of these murderers in this book and so it fulfills all the requirements for the second the um, so I hope you can see that it, with this case this sentence is very likely now let's move on to have I just mentioned in another lesson that have with inalienable objects will always be a it won't be um, the well let's make that even clearer um, if we have for example um, a dog and a long tail that's an inalienable object so let's check that out a dog has a long tail very light on information but possible um, you're just saying that any dog has any long tail it's very rare you'd use that um, the dog has a long tail you mean that dog down there and you're saying that it has a long tail this is great it's perfectly acceptable you cannot say um, a dog has the long tail that is unacceptable again just like up here <coughs> excuse me but you can say the dog has the long tail if you know which long tail but that's very unlikely again so again this one is the best one what about friend and double chin maybe your friend has a double chin well if you say a friend has a double chin um, again it's very light on information the friend has a double chin you know which friend maybe your friend um, a friend has the double chin is not acceptable and the friend has the double chin it sounds like you know which double chin and again it's really quite odd so hopefully you can see that for these these two are the best ones the best options seem to have lost my pens <laughs> they're only up here here we go no nope, it's empty sorry <laughs> let's carry on on to prepositional phrases um an x is in uh, an x is in a y the x is in a y an x is in the y i hope to show you that that's unlikely and the x is in the y let's take sock and draw a sock is in a drawer it's possible um quite unlikely again because it's very very general statement a sock is in a drawer so any drawer somewhere has some kind of sock very very low on information yeah um, the sock is in a drawer this is quite possible maybe you're looking for your missing sock and your wife says the sock is in a drawer now she doesn't know which drawer in this situation she just knows it's in one of the drawers and so she says the sock is in a drawer upstairs in your bedroom something like that um, she's very well people are very unlikely to say a sock is in the drawer um, they will usually say there is a sock in the drawer yeah they won't usually say a sock is in the drawer they'll say there is a sock in the drawer if we're just talking about a general idea of a sock in a very concrete place in a drawer which we know about um, lastly this is what your wife would say if she knows exactly which drawer it is and she's going to describe which drawer it is the sock is in the drawer in the middle of the um, in the middle of the chest of drawers or the top drawer of the chest of drawers if she knows which drawer then she would say the drawer but this one is very unlikely again and so this is the one you want to avoid in uh, to be and and to have in these kind of sentences I'm going to do some more work in future videos with these kind of constructions using just uh, X and Y. Um, I find it quite useful for understanding exactly what 
what forms are possible and what forms are impossible. Um, so please subscribe if you've liked this lesson and please follow these videos if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.